Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Patrick LeVar. I'm sharing my journey of learning Blender Octane with you guys. This is one of the videos from my free Blender 101 Octane guide. If you're totally new to Blender Octane, at least the render engine portion, this guide will help you get started. Enough of my jibba jabba, let's get straight into the video. All right, next we're looking at the glossy material. Here is the glossy material. If we take a look at the, this whole setup, again, very familiar to all of the other setups. Uh, this one here, again, we have our control for our diffuse. And uh, I really I, I really love the, the, the glossy shader coming out of the Octane here. A different model here, we have diffuse BRDF model, which we saw on the diffuse. So those models are also here on top of the the glossy because you're taking the diffuse and then you're adding the glossy on top so that's what i'm imagining there then we have our different models here again backman but we have one extra one here at the bottom ward down here at the bottom maybe let me change this color up a little bit just so we can get a little bit more of an interesting look we can see that again i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i don't really know the difference between these i'm i'm quite sure there's lots of math going on between the difference of these otherwise they wouldn't be there roughness here is our roughness, just like that. Again, the antra possibly, all these ones here are for when they needed. Thin film layer, we also have that for the roughness. So we can add a nice little thin film layer with our film IOR to control that. Sheen, again, to activate the sheen, we take it from black and bring it into white to control how much value of that sheen we want. So there is the sheen. And then also while we're in the sheen, you can control the sheen roughness, more rough more uh, diffu uh less rough less roughness i guess we pick typically use this a lot when you're making like uh clothes and things like that cloth cloth i o r here we go Re refractive and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> index of refraction again controllable there allow caustics even though even though it's like a glossy material but i don't know how that works well i don't know maybe you might get some cloth bouncing off and maybe yeah light that bounces off and hits back down i don't know so we got that transmission properties again here is our opacity not to be used to hide items but to use to be used more of a as a mask op option which i kind of mistaken in the last video i said it's not a mask it's it's more of a mask option and less of to hide objects out of the scene okay just don't use it to hide objects out of the scene we got that a different setup for that geometry here is where we control our bump we we'll add in our bump here. We can add in our normals, displacement there. Smooth, same setups here. We've got the smooth and the smooth transmitter. Rounded edges, which we can also add there. And then again, these custom settings here down at the bottom. It's pretty much the exact same node setup besides a couple of extra features here on the top here. So let's move on to the metallic shader. All right, next up, metallic material here. So the metallic material, it's pretty much, you're going to see the same pattern here. We have our default diffuse specular color here. Now, it doesn't have a socket because typically metal, when you're doing metallics, it pretty much has a, a, a color, general color. But you can still add one if you want. You can come here and add an RGB color. And then, you know, you can do the deal here, which I'm not seeing the effects here. So I'm not too sure. Typically, oh, well, there it is because of the specular mapping color is also has an effect on it. So that's why generally like this, you, when you're using the metallic shader, it's like it knows that you want m metallic, right? So it's already kind of has you set up. You can control your edge tint like we did in the universal uh, specular color here. Again, you can either pull that out. And I wonder if you know what, if I add that RGB color into here instead, and let's see if we see any color there. Yeah, there you go. So you just add the RGB spectrum into there. So I guess it's underlining diffuse color, basically kind of like underneath it. So you got that there, kind of kill that. Edge tint, specular map, which we can also control the color on that. You can just plug this straight into there. And then again, it's very faint. You don't even really see it, but it's also an option. BRDF model, Octane, Beckman, GGX, GGX, Interpre G, ST, and Ward. We still have all those. Roughness, we can jump into our roughness here. We again, controlling our roughness, and it's already kind of sets us up at a good value there, right? 0.6, there's our roughness. And then again, when we, once we set this at, uh, possibly up here, we will be able to control those, which I would do in a separate video. Again, if you hover over any slot and you press backspace, it will reset it back to its default values, just FYI. IOR, now again, the IOR here is a little bit different. We can get in here, um, I might as well break this down for you guys a little bit right here. So here is a website here. I'll make sure I'll put this down in the description here of this video. Uh, we have our RGB IOR values for common metals. 
and this is basically where we plug those numbers in these numbers here into those slots so let me go ahead and take a look at this quickly here so what I'm gonna do is select gold here and then we have our index of and I'm gonna switch this from artist to IOR color actually I'm just gonna go to RGB IOR color and then what I'm gonna do here if I pull this back over here and let you guys see I'm gonna choose I can't remember it's been a while since I've done this but I think I'm just gonna take these these two numbers here and plug those in so let's grab this one here which will be our top one and this one will be our bottom one and then if I come back over here and I'll go ahead and paste those back in here so I think this was my first one and this one was my second one and then green blue okay so yeah now we're gonna take our green and again this is how you can make physically accurate metals right and you can already see this we're getting some this, something's happening there the colors are slowly changing and then let's grab our blues all right boom <laughs> that looks gorgeous check it out let me just pull a little bit of roughness off on that there and I'm actually gonna switch my model over to GGX and there it is see oh look at that gorgeous gorgeous so that's how we would add in here to get realistic scientific numbers so you would use these index of refraction charts here so you got gold iron lead all these here and you add these numbers in to here to get accurate metals and then again here are just different models here so that's RGB IOR and then here's RGB IOR plus color which um, I have to get into the manuals to break down what exactly these do as the videos progressively get more advanced we'll start to go into the more advanced stuff here but for generally I want to keep these videos nice and simple for you guys as the future goes on there will be more advanced videos this is a quick way to get some really accurate metals I mean god that looks good I can't stop looking at that I'm like yes I love it that is I just want to start playing with it right now and making something but got to stay focused so then we also have allow caustics on here and then we got our sheen which we had in the other ones here sheen roughness I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of breeze through these now that you guys are seeing the pattern film layer we can add a little bit of film layer but on gold that wouldn't wouldn't be happening right it's, I don't know maybe it would and that was another thing too you can um, also find out the R the IOR value like film layer of gold and there might be some so then you would dial that in here I'm not gonna get into that video right now I'm about to start researching all that in here again opacity which we use for a mask not to hide things in geometry properties again we would definitely have to add some bump in here on this gold because it's not gold without a little bit of bump on it right I gotta stop okay I really want to start messing with this material right now <laughs> so and then after that we do have our smoothing smooth uh, shadow terminator and then these advanced properties down here at the bottom so that is a quick look at the metallic shader here and let's move on to the next one while I play with this gold in between these recordings <laughs> Guys, if you enjoyed this and you want to go deeper with Blender Octane in particular, I do have a Blender Octane community. I'm giving a seven day free trial to the community where you can get more access to content like this. Plus, you can get access to the Blender Octane 101 guide as it's being released, as it's being built. And I also have material libraries, databases of nodes and different types of things to help you learn Octane Blender and an engaging community. So if that's something you might be interested in, take a look down seven day free trial. Hey, if you don't like it, then you can just leave. Catch you in the next one. Take a look at the next video in the guide. Peace.